This is the Munch Box from Studio 77 and I'm going to show you exactly how to make this really brilliant lunch box step by step in this tutorial. Hi, I'm Emma from Studio 77 and like I say, this is the Munch Box. This is a brilliant pattern for out and about when you need your lunches or you know what, you could use it for anything. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it with the thermal interfacing to turn it into a super useful lunch box, like I say. I designed this pattern so that it was great for all different members of your family, from the little ones up to the adults. It's unisex design as well, and there's some great features that I'm going to show you. Often I design patterns that I want to use or my family want to use so that I know that they have the different features that I would want from the bag in question. So this one I wanted to have pockets on the side for either a coffee cup to go or a water bottle. So I've added two of those in as you can see because for me that's super important. You could leave those off if you wanted as well. They have elastic at the top so they're going to hold things in really nice and secure. You could put extra snacks in there too. There's no reason why you couldn't. On the back we have got a zipper pocket as well and I have used on the inside and I will be using PUL which is a food safe PUL uh, which stands for polyurethane laminate in case you weren't sure and that means that I can put extra snacks in there also means that it's wipe clean because it is waterproof PUL the outside I have used soft shell, which means it's a little bit nicer on my machine. It's not quite as structured as a faux leather or a vinyl. I had this leftover from a raincoat, so I wanted to use up my scraps, but it's also a really nice neutral color. And again, obviously, because I used it for my raincoat, it's waterproof so I can wipe it down and keep it nice and clean. On the top, we have got a handle so you can just grab it and go. You've also got strap connectors on the side if you want to have an over the shoulder handle. The way that the bag is made so that it's got the double zipper so that you can open it just from the top if you want to just reach in and grab something real quick or it opens all the way down so that you can have a full display of what's in the bag. The seams are all bound. This is not a lined bag and that also add structure to your bag. If you're a little bit wary about bound seams, please don't be put off. There is a couple of curves. Obviously we've got these two curves here and there is the curves here, but these are not bound. Um, so if it's the binding that's putting you off, do uh, have a go in the pattern. There are three different methods for binding this bag. The other thing that I should mention is that because of this curved panel here, the little zip it can look a bit strange when we're putting it together. So that is another reason why I wanted to make this video so that you can follow it step by step and not think that you're going crazy when it tells you to do different things in different ways within the pattern. Now the Munchbox Lunchbox, try saying that fast, <laughs> was originally part of the 77 Club. Members of the 77 Club get a brand new exclusive pattern every month before it goes into retail two months later. They get it at reduced price. They also get a private group, an online group of people sewing all the same things and lots of other goodies and giveaways too. So do check it out if you're interested, that will be in the description. In the description as well, I'm gonna put all the things that I used, the different requirements that you need for this bag, what materials, and also you're gonna find chapters so that you can skip ahead and go back if you want to, to find the piece or the place that you need to follow along to. If you're enjoying this tutorial, tutorial, please I try do and hit the thumbs up and, tips and, tricks and subscribe as I go to the along channel for more bag watching. Tutorials if you have and any comments, tips. queries or questions, do pop them in the comments box below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to download the pattern and you can find that in the description below. If you are a member of the 77 Club, you're going to find that in your members area or you also will have received an email. Right, so you're going to cut out all your pieces. On each piece, it does tell you exactly what to cut out. There is also a full cutting list within the instructions themselves too. You want to make sure you cut out the right pieces. So you're going to have two of the mesh pockets. So I just want to talk about that. 
With your mesh fabric, if you're using the By Annie's, which is what I've used here, you will notice that there is a stretch going one way and not the other. There's a little bit of a give going the other way, but it's not as stretchy. So you want to make sure that you cut it with the widest part going with the stretch. OK, so you're going to cut two of those mesh panels or pockets. And you're also going to cut the side panels as well. And these are the bottom side panels. You're also going to cut out all your other pieces. You're going to have outer fabric and you're going to have lining fabric. And you're also going to need to cut out your thermal fleece if you're using that. Now, I wanted to talk about the thermal fleece as well. So I'll put these to one side. If when you're cutting out your interfacing, your thermal interfacing that is, you find that you don't have quite the right size, like I have here, I really wanted to use up all my scraps. So what we can do is we can just simply butt them up edge to edge and then do a wide zigzag and that will make it into a wider piece. You're never going to see it, it's going to be right inside so it will all be hidden. OK, so this is the front flap and you're going to want to cut out one of each. So this is my outer fabric. Then I've got my thermal fleece or my thermal interfacing, as you can see. And then this is what I'm using for my lining. Now, my lining, I have chosen to use a PUL, which is a polyurethane laminate. And it's really thin. It's got a slight give to it. It doesn't really matter which way you cut it on this uh, on this for the lining. It has got a slight give in it, so you just want to bear that in mind when you're stitching that you don't pull it out of sync as you're going along. And I highly recommend a walking foot for this whole project, mainly because of that. If you're using anything that's stretchy, it really helps with that. Then for my outer fabric, I am using a soft shell, which is backed with a fleece. And that means that I don't need to use interfacing. I'm not going to use interfacing for my lining or for my outer fabric. It does say in the pattern that you can use interfacing or you should use interfacing. But just bear in mind that depending on the fabrics that you choose, you may need to, to change this. Um, if you've got a sturdier fabric like I have for the outer fabric I don't need to use any interfacing because it's sturdy enough hopefully you can see it's got quite a bit of structure to it so we don't need to use that also with the thermal interfacing that's going to give it a quite a lot of structure the PUL is waterproof actually the outer is as well obviously this is a lunchbox if you're doing it for any other project you can switch it up and make it your own but I have chosen to go for waterproof for the inside the thermal interfacing you can get, of course, lots of different brands, lots of different types. This one is a sew-in one. You can get a fusible one. I like to use the sew-in one um, just because I kind of feel like it might be better thermal qualities, but actually I don't know. Leave a comment below if you do know the answer to that. Um, I actually haven't used the fusible one, so let me know how you get on. So with that in mind, if you're doing the sewing one, like I am, you want to make sure that the silver side, and this is for any usable, uh, any thermal interfacing actually, you want to make sure that the silver side is facing the inside. So we've got the outer fabric right side down, and then the, the thermal interfacing has got the silver right side up. And then what we're going to do is we are going to attach it to the outer fabric. And to do that, we're going to baste within the seam allowance, but not past our seam allowance. So this is a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance on the whole pattern. So you want to make sure you're not going past that one centimetre. So I'm going to do it sort of um, three quarters of a centimetre or two eighths of an inch, something like that, all the way around the edge. And then I'm going to cut back the excess interfacing. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please do hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more bag making tutorials and sewing tips. So now I'm going to trim that right back to the stitches just so that it's kept out of the seam allowance. Then I wanted to talk about all the other pieces that we need to do the same to if you're using the 
so in thermal interfacing i'm just going to call that interfacing for this bit um rather than that whole long sentence um the other reason why i like to use the sew in is so that you can flip around the way that the silver is facing according to the different pieces which which is what we need to think about so this is the front flap and this has the outer fabric and the interfacing with the silver right sides out okay then we've got the outer front flap piece and again this is right sides out so if you're attaching it to the outer fabric you want to have the silver facing inside okay so that's those two pieces as you can see they go like together like that the base is also the same okay then for the back and the two side pieces you want to have it so that the silver is towards the back of the lining okay so the silver is inside there and that's so that the heat is pushing or the coldness is pushing towards the food that you're going to have so hopefully that makes sense so you're going to have the two side pieces and the back like that so along with all your pattern pieces, you're also going to need some hardware and some extra pieces as well. So you're going to need two zippers. You're going to need one which is 88 centimetres long with two zipper pulls facing each other. And you're going to need one which is 25 centimetres long with one zipper pull on it. Now, if you haven't put zipper pulls onto zip tape before, check out the video in the link at the top of the screen or you can find it in the description too. Okay, you're also going to need three different lengths of webbing. You're going to need two pieces which are 12 centimetres long. You're going to need one piece which is 38 centimetres long. And you're going to need a long piece which is going to be for your strap. Now you can change how long you make this. This is completely up to preference. You can add a um, adjustable slider on there as well if you want to. I have cut mine at 107 centimetres, but obviously you can choose however long you want your strap to be. You're also going to need your chosen method of binding. I am using knicker elastic or foldable elastic, fold over elastic. And you could also use waterproof canvas, cut into strips, or you can use bias binding. You can find more information about that in the pattern. I've listed the three different methods. For this video, I'm going to use the fold over elastic. You're also going to need a couple of rivets. That is optional though. You're going to need two D-rings, two lobster clasps, and of course, all your regular sewing supplies. I am using a 90 size Microtex needle and I'm using Gutterman thread throughout this project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the shoulder strap. Now I am not using a slider. Like I say, you could use a slider if you wanted to, to make it adjustable. And then you're going to want to adjust your length as well. All we're going to do is we're going to place the lobster clasps on each end and I'm going to do a barn door stitch on each end to secure. Now I have also secured all of my webbing and all of my zipper tape with a flame, with it just with a lighter. Be super careful as you do this, obviously, so that you don't burn your hands. If it does slightly catch fire, make sure you blow it out and always have a glass of water with you so that you can extinguish it if needed. And when I say that I'm going to sew a barn door, what I mean is I'm going to do a rectangle on the outside and a cross in the middle just to make it really secure. You could also add rivets on this if you wanted to too. Okay, so there's my finished strap. Really quick and easy. That is the quickest way to make a strap. If you wanted to make one with an adjustable slider and you're not sure how to do that, please check out the link in the description because I've done a video on exactly how to make your own strap in that way. So put that to one side and then we're going to move along to the back zipper pocket. So for that, we're going to need our back lining, one of our back linings, the one that obviously isn't attached to the thermal interfacing. And then we're going to need the back bottom, which is pattern piece six. And we're going to need the back top, which is pattern piece five. And I've got both the lining and the outer of those pattern pieces. 
we're going to take our shorter zipper now as you can see i've put clips on the end of my zippers this was a fabulous tip from my tester michelle thank you michelle uh, just to remind me not to pull the zipper off and obviously physically stop it to happen as well okay so we're going to take the top outer fabric and we're going to lay that on top of the zipper and we're going to base that from the edge about five millimeters from the edge to hold that in place now a top tip for when you're sewing on your zippers is to use double-sided tape and i didn't on that one <laughs> and it didn't go brilliantly but it's fine okay so we're going to lay our zipper face down so that the actual zipper tape is face down to the table and then we're going to take our lining and we're going to place that right sides down on that along that top edge and I am going to use my double-sided tape this time and I'm just going to place that along the edge and then I'm going to sew along that edge a quarter of an inch or seven millimeters from the edge then we're going to open those two up and pull it out of the way and I'm just going to clip along that top edge to keep it out of the way for the next step because as you might have guessed we're going to do exactly the same with the bottom edge going to put those clips back on the end of the zippers the other thing is if you didn't want to put clips on the end keep taking them on and off you can also base the end end with a few stitches so we're going to take our bottom place it right sides down this is the back bottom and I am going to use the double sided on this bit this time and we're going to baste along that edge about five millimeter from the edge and just like we did before we're going to place our lining right sides down onto the back of the zipper and we're going to stitch along the edge seven millimeter or quarter of an inch from the edge of that seam now that side is sewn as well we're going to open it out and again clip the bottom together and then we're going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch from both edges on the top going to piece the back together okay so I've put my clips back on those edges to make sure that they the zip can't fall off but again you could baste it you want to lay the back piece with your thermal interfacing on it right sides down then you want to lay your other lining piece right side up and then we're going to lay our pocket piece that we've just done with the right side up again okay so we've sandwiched those pieces so we've got the piece we just made the lining and the other lining with the thermal interfacing on it okay I'm going to clip those all together as you can see my outer fabric as I mentioned at the beginning is a little bit stretchy and it has gone over the edge that's totally fine it's just stretched as I was putting that zip on. Should have used my double-sided tape, like I mentioned, but I didn't. Not sure why. Uh, I don't think I've had my coffee this morning. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to clip that all in place and then we're going to baste about five millimetres from the edge all the way around. We're going to move that to one side we're going to get go on to the front flap of the bag with the long zipper on so we're going to need our outer front flap and we're going to need the so we're going to need our outer front flap and we're going to need the inner piece as well we're also going to need our long zip okay first thing we're going to do is we are going to take those clips off and we are going to baste those ends that's going to make it a lot easier when we come to sewing okay so we're going to take the outside front flap and we're going to turn it right side out then we're going to grab our zipper tape and we're going to find the middle of both our zipper tape and the front flap and we're just going to make a mark you can use a friction pen or chalk if you prefer then we're going to get our double sided tape and we're going to put double sided tape all the way 
along that opening. Then we're going to take our zipper, we're going to find that middle point that we made and we're going to match it up with the middle point on that opening and we're going to press the zipper tape all the way around that edge matching up with that raw inside edge. Now you may find, like me, can you see it's curling up there, that it's a bit tricky. We're going to see how we go. If we need to, we're going to snip into the zipper tape. Then I'm going to use a zipper foot and I'm going to stitch that in place five millimetres from the edge. Okay, so I've stitched that in place and then I'm going to place some more double sided along that edge so that we can place the outside flap lining right sides down on top and then we're going to stitch seven millimeter or quarter of an inch from the edge to keep that in place. Okay, so I've stitched that in place and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully snip around these two corners to make the seam allowance and the zipper lie really nicely. Then we can push that lining to the back and we're going to clip around the edge to keep it in place. Okay, so I've top stitched that all on. Then this is the middle of the front flap and it's the bit with the thermal interfacing on it. And we, of course, want to attach the other side to it, the other side of the zipper. So we're gonna lay that on. So we're gonna lay that on the table, right side up, and we're gonna put our double-sided tape all the way around the outside. And we're going to attach the zip all the way around the edge, sticking it to our double-sided tape. You want to make sure that you match up the two ends to begin with so that you know that it's all going to fit in really well. You may find that it's stretching a bit across these two corners. So what I like to do is match up the middle two marks and then see what we have left for the corners. And then I have snipped into the zip tape on the corners so that I can get it to fit. And then we're going to baste along that edge, five millimetres from the edge, all the way around. Okay, so now that that's basted on, then what we want to do is we want to just take those clips off the edge for a minute. I'm going to fold all of that inside and out of the way. Just pop a little clip in there just to keep that there. Then we're going to take the front flap lining and we're going to place that right sides together. Get my trusty double sided tape and we're going to put the tape all the way around the edge just like we do normally to hold it in place for stitching.
and then we need to stitch it with a quarter of an inch or about seven millimeter seam allowance. Now we're going to reach through that bottom opening and we're going to turn the whole thing the right way out. And then we're going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge on the inside of the zipper. While I'm at the machine, I'm also going to baste around the edge, holding the lining and the outer fabric together. Then we're going to grab the bottom side pieces and we're going to take the two mesh pieces and our fold over elastic. I'm going to make sure again that you've got the stretch going across, not up and down. I'm going to grab our fold over elastic and we're going to place it along the top edge, fold it over and we're going to stitch along that edge. And we're going to stitch it just close to the bottom edge of that elastic. Now, as you're stitching, you want to try and use a walking foot if you have one. You want to make sure that you don't pull the elastic as you sew or that it doesn't stretch because we don't want to have any kind of uh, pulling on that to make it so that it bunches up. Likewise, we don't want to pull the mesh as well. So you want to make sure that it goes nice and neatly to that. And then we're going to stitch it close to the edge using a small zigzag. It's really important that you use a zigzag over a straight stitch so that it can stretch to allow the water bottle and your coffee cup to go inside. Okay, so I've stitched those two along the edges and then I'm going to put them to one side. And we're going to move along to the straps. Now, unfortunately, my camera didn't pick up this bit, so I'll have to tell you what I did. So we're going to grab our D-ring and our webbing and we're going to place them along the middle of the top of the bottom side piece. OK, and we're going to base that in place along the top and we're going to do that on the other piece as well. Then we're going to grab the top side pieces and we're going to place them right sides together along that top edge. We're going to make sure that the curved pieces are at the bottom. And we're going to stitch along those edges one centimetre or three eighths of an inch from the edge. Once you've stitched along that seam, we're going to open up the seam and we're going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch onto the bottom panel. And you want to make sure that you push the seam allowance towards the bottom panel so that the webbing and the seam allowance flip towards the bottom. OK, so I've stitched those in place. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put in a rivet if you are doing rivets and we're going to place them so that they catch the webbing at the bottom, hold it in place, give it lots of strength. We're going to put a little bit of Decaville light behind just to give it some extra strength. If you don't want to do rivets or you don't have rivets, you could just do a, a barn door, like which is a square and a cross in the middle like we did on the strap or even just a lower line of stitching, but that is not as strong. 
Okay, so we've got our rivets in and now we're going to attach our top strap. So that is the final piece of webbing. And there are two ways that we can do this. We can either sew it into that top seam like so and attach it to the middle so that it comes out the top. Or what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to each side and I'm going to keep it way away from the seam allowance. And what you want to do is you can either do a barn door stitch and or you can put in a rivet. So I'm going to do an outer square and then pop a rivet in the middle just to keep that really nice and secure. Like I say, I'm going to make sure that all of my stitching is well away from that top edge. So once we've done it to one side, we're going to attach it to the other side in exactly the same way. You want to make sure that you've got the same amount overlapping. So I'm just going to check that as I do it. And do the same, stitch a square or if you're not using a rivet, stitch a barn door. Okay, so now that that's done and we've got our rivets in place, we've secured our strap on, we're then going to lay over the mesh pockets. We're going to lay them down so that the edge matches along the top edge of the seam. Then we're going to get our lining for the two sides and we're going to place them so that they are right sides out or wrong sides together. I'm going to clip it all together and then we're going to baste all the way around the edge on both pieces to keep everything nice and together. Of course you're going to make sure that we don't catch our strap when we do that. Now as you can see and you'll find this when you put yours on the mesh is going to be a bit longer. Don't worry about that we're going to chop that off. That is of course because there's no seam allowance on the mesh pocket but there is on the underneath piece. So we're going to base that around the edge. OK, so then we're going to put that to one side. We're going to grab our we're going to grab our base piece and we are going to clip. And as you can see, I've clipped the outer piece and the lining together and we're just going to baste around the edge to keep those together as well. Okay, so now that that is basted on, we're going to put that to one side. I'm going to grab back our sides and we're going to grab our front piece. And now we're going to attach them together. So we're going to put them right sides together. We're going to match up that bottom edge. And we're going to go around, all the way around the top. Now, if you've done your strap the same as me, you're going to want to pull it out of the seams. If you have done it the other way so that it goes into the seams, as is shown on the pattern, then you obviously want to make sure that you catch that and you're going to do it slightly differently. So we're going to clip that all the way around. OK, so I've clipped around that edge and I've stitched that one centimetre or three eighths of an inch from the edge. I find that using a zipper foot is much better for getting around the curve and you can snip those corners if you want to as well to make that a bit easier. You are going to want to make sure that you line up both the corners so that the longer front piece follows into the curve. Next, we're going to sew on the other side. So we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to clip that all the way around and then we're going to sew it one centimetre or three eighths of an inch from the edge. So once that main front panel is stitched on, we're then going to move to the back panel. You're going to want to place that right sides together again, and you're going to want to make sure that the zipper is well out of the way of the seams. We're going to do just like we did before, clip and then stitch the seams. Now you're going to want to do the two side seams first, and then you're going to want to do the top or the part that connects to the front panel. And then we're going to move along to sewing on the base. And when we sew on the base, we're going to do just exactly the same thing. We're going to sew the front and the back 
panels to the base first and then we're going to do the two side seams or vice versa but you want to do the opposite seams. You want to make sure that you are starting and stopping one centimeter or three eighths of an inch from each end so that you don't stop yourself from being able to sew the corners correctly. Okay so we've got our bag completely sewn up and the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to trim all those edges make them all as neat as we can just so that there's no excess fabric in those seams. And then the final thing is to bind the seams. So using your preferred method like I said earlier I'm going to use this fold over elastic which is nice and user friendly. You want to place your method of choice over the seams we're going to clip and then stitch that all in place. When you come to the ends, you want to just fold back the elastic or bias binding, whatever you're using, so that you can keep it nice and neat so there's no raw edges. A couple of tips while you're watching me do the binding. The fold over elastic is probably the easiest method. I purchased around three metres and it was just about enough. Um, I do stretch it as I go, you'll find that that naturally makes it want to fold and it makes it slightly easier. If you find that after you've stitched it you haven't caught the back, don't worry, just go over those stitches. It's fine, it's on the inside, no one is going to say, why is there two lines of stitching there? When it comes to stitching I also use a zigzag, this helps to catch both sides as well. When you start and stop on the ends, you want to fold over the elastic onto the inside so that you don't have a raw edge. While we're talking about the ends as well, you may find that the elastic is hard to get under the machine or the whole seam is hard to get under the machine. If that is the case, then you may want to stitch down one side first before just on the ends before folding it and stitching the top side as well. Because the ends of each seam or each corner can get really bulky, I do say or I do recommend that you use a regular foot rather than a walking foot. A walking foot can be really bulky because it's so long. You could use a zipper foot as well or any kind of shorter foot to get you through those bulky edges. Okay, so I've done all my binding and then the last thing to do is to berth the bag or basically turn it the right way out. And there you go, all that's left is to add on your strap and you're ready to go out with your lunch. I really hope you've loved this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Do check out the video that is coming up on the screen right now. I really do think you're gonna love it. I'll see you on the next video.